As you guys probably already know by now, I'm a huge fan of survival horror. It's my favourite genre in all of video gaming, and most of my favourite franchises of all time fall under the survival horror banner. Many people have asked me what the greatest survival horror game of all time is, and the answer should be pretty obvious to anyone who's watching this video right now. Obscure 2 is absolutely the pinnacle of the genre. It has wonderful gameplay that is incredibly addictive. It has a beautiful story with some of the most engrossing and well written characters you've ever seen in a game. I hope there'll be some cute guys there. Right. What about me then? You're not a guy, Kenny. You're a friend. No comment. Come here, my sweet. So I won't be shooting my load tonight then, huh? You just save your ammunition for later. And it has graphics that still look mind-blowing today. We took an energy drink to fight off a headache. Maybe that counters whatever it is that makes you go crazy. Seriously though, if you are looking to get into the survival horror genre, you can't go wrong with the first three Resident Evil games. These games define survival horror in the early years, and they are still very enjoyable to play today. Assuming you can get used to what could be considered rather archaic controls by today's standards. And the voice acting too, of course. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But Just go. Yeah. That was close. Thanks, Barry. D don't mention it. What a monster. I can't believe... What the hell is this place, anyway? The early Resident Evil games used a tank control scheme. A tank control scheme is exactly what it sounds like. The character you are controlling moves about like a tank. They can't strafe and will always move forward when the up button is pushed on the PS1 controller, regardless of what direction the character is currently facing. This kind of control scheme was very popular during the PS1 era, since controllers back then did not have dual analog sticks, and also the limited power of the machines back then meant that fully 3D worlds were very difficult to pull off. PS1 era Resident Evil games use static camera angles and pre-rendered backgrounds. When a game uses pre-rendered backgrounds, it essentially means that the environment around the player is a glorified painting. Nothing is rendered in real time, except for the player character, enemies, and certain objects. Using this method to create game worlds during the PS1 era allowed them to look far more detailed than they would have looked had everything been created using actual 3D assets. Shinji Mikami had originally intended Resident Evil to be played fully in first person. But once he realised the PS1 simply wasn't powerful enough to create the kind of detailed environments he wanted, he decided to go third person instead. This decision paid off more than he could have possibly imagined. By going third person and restricting the player's view of the room around him, it actually made the game far more tense and scary than it would have been otherwise. A lot of people seem to believe that all of the horror in the Resident Evil games comes from jump scares, but that simply isn't the case.
Okay, so it kinda is the case, but there are a lot more things that make Resident Evil scary apart from that stuff. Terrifying creatures who can kill you in a single attack? limited saves and a very scarce number of bullets and healing supplies meant that nearly every moment could potentially be your last and this added to the horror dramatically. If the games auto saved every few minutes, if they gave you a lot of ammo and made dying much less of a hindrance then the games would have been a lot less scary but thankfully Resident Evil has yet to go down that road. <laughs> Oh. The first two Resident Evil games are still great experiences in their own right, although I highly recommend playing the GameCube remake over the original, especially since it's now available on so many platforms. But today I want to review the third game in the series, not only because it's probably the scariest game in the original trilogy, but also because I believe it to be probably the best game in the PS1 trilogy as well. Resident Evil 3 is when the series really started to move away from its survival horror roots. First things first, I highly recommend against playing this game on the easy difficulty set. You're given a ridiculous amount of ammo, guns and health and it completely destroys the experience in my honest opinion. The only other difficulty in the game is hard mode, which is what you're looking at now. But don't let this footage throw you off. The game is still much easier than the first two games, even on this difficulty setting. Even on hard, you're given more ammo and more health than you realistically need. Although there are a few difficulty spikes that I'll talk about later. At this point, you're all probably thinking, well, if the game is easier than previous entries, if you're given more health and ammo, how is this game the scariest in the original trilogy? And the answer to that is simple. We've got a... This handsome bastard. This is Nemesis, and he's here purely to make your life a living hell. You can pump as many bullets as you want into him, you'll never keep him down. The best you can hope for is to briefly knock him out and even doing that can be very hard. Nemesis can kill you in seconds, he runs after you, he is a bazooka, but you know what makes Nemesis really terrifying? What makes him the stuff of nightmares? He understands how doorknobs work. That's right, no longer will running into another room cause your pursuer to give up. Nemesis is essentially like the Terminator in this game. He will stop at nothing until you are dead, and he is brilliant. One of the greatest monsters in any video game, in my honest opinion. How did he find me? What makes him even more terrifying is the fact that you never know when he's going to show up. Depending on the choices you make in the game, Nemesis might show up in a variety of different areas, totally catching you off guard. Are you crazy? You could have barbecued both of us! It's important to mention that Resident Evil 3 only has a single campaign and that can easily be completed in a couple of hours. The first game had two campaigns, hell the second game had two campaigns for each character, making for a total of four campaigns. 
but in Resident Evil 3 you are stuck with Jill. To make up for this, the game has several key choices that can drastically change the rest of the game afterwards. For example, the first choice you get in the game is to either run inside the Raccoon City Police Department or to stay and fight Nemesis. If you choose to fight Nemesis, you can search Brad's corpse and find a card on him that will allow you to skip a massive chunk of the police station. These choices made the game very replayable, although it has to be said that the game can be completed in less than 3 hours if you're only intending on playing it through once. Puzzles have always been a staple of the Resident Evil series, and 3 is no exception. In fact, Resident Evil 3 cranks the puzzles up to a ridiculous degree. There are probably more puzzles in Resi 3 than in any other game in the series. Most of them are well designed and very enjoyable to solve. Well, except for this abomination. This water puzzle is infamous at this stage, but it really isn't that bad once you realise how everything works. Just be prepared to spend about an hour trying to figure this thing out on a first playthrough. If there is one thing Resident Evil nails, it's the pacing. You're very rarely stuck in the same area for any more than an hour. You go from the streets, to the police station, and to a spooky clock tower, and to several other areas during the course of the game. The game moves at a breakneck pace and it's very hard not to be impressed by the spectacle of it all. This spectacle comes at a price however. Since the game is constantly changing locations, every location is practically tiny in comparison to earlier entries. The Metroidvania aspect of the series has well and truly been left behind at this point. Resident Evil 3 is widely considered to be the game where the series really began to move away from its survival horror roots. There's a lot more ammo in this game. A lot more guns, a lot more zombies, and a lot more action. But at this point in the series, it almost feels earned. The T-Virus has spread to Raccoon City, and nearly everyone is infected at this point. So it wouldn't have made much sense for there to only be a handful of zombies, or other creatures lurking about. And even though the game is more action focused, that doesn't mean it can't be tough. Hunters still exist and they can slice your head clean off in a single attack. And some of the boss fights can be incredibly hard, especially the clock tower fight against Nemesis. Like most Resi games, the story can be enjoyable. As long as you don't take it too seriously. No! If we're gonna die, then we should get to choose when it happens! some really awesome moments though, mainly any cutscene that features Nemesis. Resident Evil 3 is an excellent entry into the series. Nemesis is a great adversary. The game had pitch perfect pacing. Even if there were still a few instances of tedious backtracking, like trying to find all the missing components to get a tram moving again, the puzzles were great, the action was intense, and the bosses were awesome. A brilliant game, and a survival horror game that every fan needs to play. It looks like your party has been cancelled. <laughs>